Welcome to the transmissions. A relation is a certain kind of dependency. The dependency can be of an object on an another object, an object and person, or person to person. We have seen in our last episode that there is no person actually. Individual is an illusion. So what we see is that in reality, the dependency is. between the objects and objects objects and body body and body body and mind and mind and mind these are the possible combinations of dependencies which we call as relations why is there a dependency because there is a need there is a need to survive and therefore these entities are dependent on each other for their survival dependency enables survival we are dependent on certain things for survival when we are dependent we call it a relation the relation is simply survival that is all a relation is it is an adaptation for survival it is a set of behaviors that this body mind organism adopts in order to survive that is what you call a relation a relation is simply a give and take a relation is a transaction a relation is a behavior which is beneficial for survival a mutually beneficial set of behaviors is a relation when there is no need there is no relation all of our behavior of this body mind is governed by a need to survive all of our likes are that which enable survival that which is beneficial for survival ends up being our like that which is harmful for survival we dislike it all of our likes and dislikes are actually oriented towards survival only what you call love is extreme like a favor an attraction that is whatever is beneficial for survival we call it love all the hate is the opposite of love which is extreme dislike repulsion and avoidance we avoid everything that is harmful for survival and we call it hate we behave in certain ways which benefit our bodily life our bodily existence those set of behaviors those thoughts those tendencies you call it as love and when we behave in a certain way to avoid that which is harmful for survival is the hate they are not emotions the emotion is a by product of these drives that we have these drives are felt as emotion the motion in the mind that drives this organism that is what a relation is it is just a set of tendencies driven by a need to survive so we see that a relation is simply our animal nature it is a dependency and therefore it is a bondage it is in the mind it is a need it is a program to relate is to bind oneself to these tendencies of the mind a relation is an identification with these tendencies of the mind we actually identify with what we are related to we are related to a body we identify with the body we are related to other people we identify ourselves as son of this daughter of this husband of this wife of this these are the bondages that we have formed the reason is need need to survive freedom is freedom from the relations when i need nothing it is extreme freedom 
am free only when there are no relations as soon as there are relations there is bondage and then we are governed by this set of behaviors that drive our lives one can say that okay i cannot live without relations all this is okay but i need relations in order to live and we can see immediately that uh, we need not give up living we need to give up the bondage only the bondage is in the mind the bondage is not out there so one can ask now if i do not relate to anybody if there is no love or hate isn't that indifference in my view indifference is just another kind of relation you have avoided everything that is not required for your survival the relation is slightly neutral it is not extreme but it is still a relation so actually there is a state where you can relate to everything without relating that set of behaviors is called unconditional love it is not a simple extreme like or dislike it is not defined by what you need or what you don't need it is not indifference it is total acceptance unconditional love is just acceptance there is no love there is no hate there is no attraction there is no repulsion when you give selflessly that is unconditional love when you demand nothing when we live selflessly when we do not live under the delusion of being an individual that is trying to survive this kind of behavior is unconditional love it is actually more like a state of the mind it is less like a set of behaviors the behaviors are then driven by the state of unconditional love the state of acceptance unconditional love is non dual there is no opposite of unconditional love there are opposites of all relations but the unconditional love is the only relation which is not a relation which is which has no dual there is no opposite of it you can break down the human relations into seven categories if you are interested in studying what the humans do the first category is transactional for example i form a relation only when i need something and then the relation is broken as soon as i get it it is pure give and take it is a business a transaction for example i go to my shopkeeper i buy things i buy the stuff that is needed for my survival i pay him money he accepts the money and we say goodbye that is the end of the relation if i don't want anything i do not get, go there i have nothing to do with the shopkeeper it is just a transaction it is simply a fulfilling of needs that's all it is it's called transactional there is another kind of human relation which is called genetic and under that comes the relation of the mother son the father son my father daughter siblings and relatives actually whenever i say relation you assume the genetic kind of relation the view of the society regarding relations is very very narrow and ignorant they think the only kind of relation there can be is a genetic relation also called the blood relation if you see that is again another kind of illusion that is a, an idea in the mind we know that the genetic material the dna is common among all living things it is exactly the same it, it defines how the bodies are formed so obviously the bodies are born out of other bodies and so there will be correlation between these two bodies actually we are genetically related to a potato 40% to a cow 80% to a dog 90% and to a chimpanzee 99% that is equal to the genetic connection which you have with your siblings or your grandmother grandfather or whatever relatives you have you are also a relative of a potato why do we give favor why do we favor our these other relatives instead of other living things the answer is very simple these other people these are other individuals they are directly related to our survival 
If the mother does not feed her child, there is no relation. If the father does not provide a security to the children, he is not a father. He is unrelated. If there is no family where they protect each other, where they feed each other, where they are useful for each other in everyday life, in everyday survival, only then it is a family. If there is no need, no family. So whatever we call as genetic relatives are again an arrangement for survival. You won't know your father and mother if nobody told you. All plants and animals are our genetic relatives. Favoring few out of them is the tendency of the mind. It is all in the mind. And the mind has formed these tendencies, these relations, for only one thing, that is survival. There is another kind of relation which is called sexual relation. And it is formed solely for the purpose of procreation. And all your married relations and uh, relations between uh, males and females, partners, they come under the category of sexual relations. And you can guess it is based on a need, the need for reproduction, the need to continue the species. All your marriages are sexual relations. All this attraction, repulsion is of sexual nature. There has to be a sexual relation there, otherwise it's not a marriage. We have legalized this kind of relation and we call it marriage. The offspring born out of this kind of wedlock bondage is a legal offspring. This is a creation of the society which arises out of a need of reproduction and survival of the, the next generation. Otherwise, there is no relation. If there is no need, there is no relation. There are other kinds of relations which come under the category of social relations, social bonds. For example, that of a controller and a controlled, that of the ruler and the ruled, that of a leader and the led. There is a, two, there is a big social hierarchy which comes under the social relations. For example, the relation of you with your boss. It is a social relation. The boss is the provider here and you have agreed to work for the boss. It is a slavery that you have taken on because you need to survive. Because somebody else has more than you and you have agreed to do this service. You are a servant because of the master, because of this need to survive. When there is no such need, there are no social relations. If you are completely free, if you are completely independent, you do not need a leader, you do not need a ruling class, you do not need a provider. There are many distortions that have occurred in all these relations as, as you can guess. In the social relations, the distortion is that those who are controlling the masses, they do not want the masses to become independent. They do not want the masses to be free. And they keep them under certain kind of slavery, certain kind of dependency to keep this social relation going. And we are all slaves, social slaves. There is another kind of relation that is found among uh, humans and higher animals also, which is emotional relation. There is sometimes an emotional bond and friendship is the best example of this relation. There is some kind of emotional fulfillment that we get when we are around people, especially the people that we like. Often this is called love, but as we have seen, love is simply an emotional relation. As soon as we do not get this rise in emotions, high emotions, pleasant emotions, this love turns to hate. It oscillates between these two. Depending on our emotional needs, we find that the organism, especially the humans, cannot survive well when its emotional needs are not being fulfilled. It is also a need, it is also an illusion based on this need for humans to relate. It is a dependency of the emotional kind. When you are happy with yourself, 
you do not need others to fulfill this kind of dependency there is no dependency actually above that there is a relation of the intellect we admire somebody who is of higher intellect than ourselves somebody who is very very skilled an artist an engineer a scientist a wise man a philosopher who knows a lot of things who is very smart and intelligent we get attracted to such kind of people because we lack this kind of skill we like this kind of talent and that forms an intellectual relation the relation between a student and a teacher is an intellectual kind of relation we form a relation with somebody in order to learn to sharpen our intellect to creatively use our intelligence that is the relation between a teacher and a student you can see that this is a higher kind of relation still there is a need here the need to express our intellectual abilities lead to formation of intellectual relations again if i am expressing my intellect without restrictions there is no such dependency on others i don't need to learn anything and there is no relation it is again a need only no need of intellectual achievements no relations there is another kind of relation surprisingly which is higher than the intellectual relation and that is also called the spiritual relation that is a recognition of oneness when i see everything and everybody as myself that is form that forms a relation between everything and me that is the relation of oneness and that is another name for unconditional love actually unconditional love is acceptance acceptance comes only when i see everything as my own part and now you cannot call it a relation actually it cannot be broken how can you break oneness once you realize i am one with everything this truth cannot be broken and therefore this relation the spiritual relation or the unconditional love has no opposite we cannot even call it a relation because it is not of a dependency it is not a dependency it is existence it is the realization of the truth of the existence the oneness of the existence the realization that not there is nothing separate all there is is this witnessing consciousness when there are many there are many objects there are many bodies there are many people there are many individuals there are many minds and therefore a relation is possible how can there be a relation when there is only one how can i relate to myself i need at least two to form a relation if you are me if everything is me do i need a relation and this realization brings the acceptance you cannot artificially accept everything and call it unconditional love it is fake love it is not unconditional it will break apart as soon as the situations become opposite it is just a pretension the recognition of oneness the recognition of who i am essentially brings about unconditional love there is no other way to love unconditionally or to accept everything unconditionally we do not call it a relation actually we call it a connection this connection is connection of oneness that is how there is connection because there are no two there is only one i am that one i am that self which appears as many this knowledge leads to acceptance this knowledge leads to unconditional love that is not based on a dependency that is not based on a need as you can guess very few can attain this kind of unconditional love this kind of spiritual relation with others you can study this matrix of relations in more detail if you want we can take a look at the hierarchy of relations the seven kind of relations that i've shown you you can now easily correlate them with the layers of the mind the higher we go in the hierarchy of the layers 
the purer the relation becomes and at the highest level there is no relation there is only a connection there is only a recognition of oneness that is all there is the relations are in the mind and that is that are and uh, that are a result of ignorance an ignorance which is not knowing my real nature not knowing the oneness of everything this ignorance brings about all kinds of relations and the relations are need based the relations are selfish the relations are dual there is a good relation and there is an exact opposite of that relation so there is this transaction and there is indifference i am related genetically racially nationally to some people i am not related to other people those with whom i am genetically related they are my friends those who are not they are my enemies you can see the duality if there is sexual fulfillment you call it love if not you call it hate you call it dislike you call it re- rejection if uh, there is leading if there is caring leader it is good if there is oppression if there is slavery it is bad if there are pleasant emotions induced by somebody else you ca- call it pure love if not you call it boredom that person is boring now if you are of a higher intelli- intelligence if you have more skills than i have you are my master you are my teacher i am your student otherwise you are useless you are not useful for me these are the dual kind of relations the last one the spiritual kind has no dual it is unconditional acceptance it does not matter how others are how things are how this world is there is total acceptance because it is me i cannot not accept what you are because there is this reali- realization of oneness you can see that the oneness is expressing itself in form of dualities of relations so at the highest level there is the self there is me i am the self i am this witness in consciousness and there is nothing else so it has no dual not dual below that there is the higher mind which is simply tendencies of the mind of like and dislike that is all there is below that is the ego with the tendencies of love and hate fear and repulsion attraction and dependency that is the egoic relation below that is the body with the relations of pleasure and pain it forms relations where there is pleasure it avoids things which give it pain there are programs the automated programs in the nervous system that are that form the relations of reward and punishment there are structures in the body that form the basic control systems anything that is good for survival of the body the control systems favor that kind of action there is a bottom most uh, relation which is structures the structures are formed as relations between objects for example your car is a structure which is simply a relation between its different parts you break those relations when your steering wheel is no more controlling the wheels well there is no car then it is a broken object it is a broken structure that is the lowest kind of organization that we see in the self in the oneness we we call these layers as the universal mind as you will see in our coming episodes i am going to take this kind of analysis into greater depths it is also very enlightening to compare the unconditional love with the ordinary love the dualistic egoistic tendency of the mind which people call it call as love so i have given a table here which goes through this uh, comparison what is the egoic love what is the selfish love it is an impure form of the unconditional love when the recognition of oneness is there the same love becomes pure it is called pure love unconditional love or acceptance 
the egoic love is dual in nature it has it is based on pleasure and pain reward and punishment love and hate unconditional love is not dual it does not matter what kind of situations are there the acceptance is always present egoic love is a set of behaviors that is uh, beneficial for survival it assists in survival of the organism and unconditional love is simply quality of the self nothing to do with survival it is the same in life and death in birth and life it does not degenerate when the survival takes over egoic love originates from the need and unconditional love is selfless i have same love for you even if you provide for me or not even if you hate me there is the same acceptance here even if i don't need you i have the same acceptance for you you will find that the egoic love needs an agent to trigger it if there is a need you will find an agent a person an object and that that triggers the love for it as soon as the agent is gone the love is gone unconditional love is always present it is eternally present it does not come and go how can the oneness come and go the egoic love is exclusive to the object of the love if i love an object i am going to love only that i do not like other objects if i love one person i dislike other people or i am indifferent to other people my love is exclusive this is the egoic love unconditional love is inclusive it includes everything it includes everyone if there is no egoic love i am indifferent to other people unconditional love there is no indifference i have the same set of behaviors for everybody when it is not returned the egoic love turns into hate the i love you quickly becomes i hate you when it is not returned when the favor is not given back the egoic love turns into hate actually it is the same thing appearing in two forms love is only hate and hate is just negative love attraction is negative repulsion only the unconditional love does not suffer from this oscillation it is it does not turn into anything else when the unconditional love is not return actually it is purely giving if it is the giving is not return it still remains giving if nobody accepts me the acceptance remains in case of egoic love the person who holds that object or the person as a source of happiness becomes possessive does not let go of that object or the person clings to that person is afraid of losing that person in unconditional love there is a carelessness there is freedom there is no clinging there are no attachments if you come if you talk is perfect it's okay if you do not come to me if you do not talk to me it is perfect and okay you are still me regardless of how you are behaving you are me there is no possessiveness here uh, letting people do what they want is unconditional love even if they are doing something wrong it is unconditional love nothing else egoic love is about giving and expecting something in return it is give and take unconditional love is only giving nothing is expected in return that is unconditional that is the definition of the word unconditional without any conditions it is simply a giving when you are in a relation when you are in love you demand the love in return actually you demand all the care all the protection everything that is necessary for survival in return because you are related to that other person a marriage is a very good example of such a relation there it is full of demands if you are doing something in return to this uh, to keep this relation going the marriage lasts stop doing it stop fulfilling the need of the others the marriage is broken it is a very selfish and conditional relation unconditional love does not demand there are no demands that are placed on you it is only giving if the other person is demanding it is still giving it is not 
becoming a slave of the other person because I need to give. It is even the refusal to give is unconditional. Not bowing down to the demands of the others is also unconditional. There is freedom in it. There is total acceptance. But you are demanding, but I cannot give it. But I still accept what you are. You are simply my own form. People need to maintain their relations. Even if they dislike doing something, they need to do it in order to keep that relation going because there is some kind of dependency there. Unconditional love needs no action. It is actionless. We don't need to act to keep it going because it is the fundamental nature of reality. Oneness, acceptance, connectedness. What do you need to do to keep everything connected? Nothing at all. If a relation is between one body and the other body, which is formed for the reason of procreation or sexual pleasure, it will disappear as soon as the body becomes old, as soon as the body becomes weak and ugly, that relation is broken. Or as soon as you find somebody who is more beautiful, who is more healthy in terms of the body, a more, there is more re reproductive success in that relation. So you will abandon the previous relation. Unconditional love does not depend on a body. I love a child unconditionally as much as I love an old man, an old woman, an animal, the grass, trees, insects, fish. I love everything independent of whatever, what kind of body that form is. When there is the selfish love, the egoic love, it will Determine most of your actions. You are influenced by the need to remain in a relation. Your actions, your speech, your thoughts, they are enslaved by the relation. Unconditional love is totally free. You do what you want to do. You speak you want, that you want to speak. You think that you want to think. There is total freedom here. It is not bound by this endless need to keep the relations going. You are totally free here. Plus, there is unconditional love. You, you help the people. You do their work without forming any kind of bond. Most of the people don't even know how to be free, how to talk freely or how to act freely because they are totally enchained in these egoic relations. They have lost any sense of freedom actually because they are totally bound by all kinds of relations. You are born a bound person and you die in bondage. You have never known the freedom. The reason is relations. It is an illusion that keeps us bound. The egoic love wants more. You see, this much love is not enough. You want more. You want more acceptance by other people. Other people define you. You are incomplete because nobody likes you. You are deficient because you, nobody loves you. There is always a sense of unfulfillment. There is always the sense of dissatisfaction because you are living in an illusion. It is not true and therefore does not give you any kind of satisfaction. There is always a demand to get more and more and more. You want more relations. You want to be accepted by more people. You want everybody to respect you. You are disturbed when people insult you, when they don't love you, when they hate you, or when they disrespect you. Even a simple different point of view is taken as hate. And you are living in this hell of relations all the time. Unconditional love does not want more. If it is everything, how, what can it want? How can it want more when you are already everything? When I have accepted everything as myself, as connected to myself, as my own form, there remains nothing to get more. There remains nothing to get. Everything is me. It is complete satisfaction. It is complete fulfillment. And that is why 
it is not bound by anything it is boundless love you can see that the egoic love or egoic relations or egoic indifference is a kind of ignorance it arises out of this ignorance of not knowing who i am because i do not know my essential nature i do not know what is reality i do not know the truth i do not know what is the self that i am the unconditional love arises out of knowledge knowledge of non duality advait knowledge of my own real nature which is everything which is this existence i am this existence i am unconditional i am love myself i am free from all relations i am free from all dependencies i am free from all needs my behavior changes when this kind of knowledge is here an endless snatching of happiness from others to complete acceptance giving this is our real nature our real nature is unconditional giving accepting our re- our nature does not like relations they are impermanent structures in the mind relations are illusory a concept that arise out of the need for survival the concepts in the mind that are formed because of this egoic need of survival my real nature is free from these needs my real nature is totally unconditional acceptance i do not need to relate to anybody i do not need any relations when you are free from relations you are free in true sense i am also this eternal freedom which expresses in many forms all relations are formed and broken on this eternal background of consciousness and bliss i am already free i actually do not need to form a relation or to break a relation in order to be free i simply need to realize my own nature which is freedom itself which is love bliss itself i am that thank you for listening asto